Okay, well, God bless you all in the wonderful name of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Today, I'm going to continue the age of grace revealed in Acts, and this is part two. And I want to start in uh, Acts chapter nine. And what we're going to look at in a little bit of detail today is the conversion of Saul. And in chapter 9, in verse 1, if you looked up, you would see chapter 8, verse 40. I just want to point this out. It says, and we know about Philip. Philip uh, went to Samaria and preached Christ, and there was great joy in that city. And then he ministered to the eunuch and so forth. And at the end of the chapter, it says, but Philip was found at Artreus, and passing through, he preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. And I just want to point that out, that Philip went to Caesarea, and he was still in Caesarea in Acts chapter 21, verse 8, when Paul saw him on his way to Jerusalem, and we know that record also. But here we are, Acts chapter 9, verse 1, And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughters against the disciples of the Lord, went into the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogue, that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth, and he heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And that was Jesus Christ talking to him. He said, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And this is a, a bit of an Orientalism. If you know the Orientalism, it helps you a little bit. But even farmers in our country at the beginning of the century would do this. They would use oxen to, to pull, to plow, and other things. And the oxen sometimes would not really want to plow. They'd want to stop or look around. And so what they would do is they'd have a stick and they'd put a point in it. They'd take their little jackknives out and put a little point at the end. And then they would hold it in such a way that when the, the oxen would kick, he would kick that needle, that point, and it would hurt him. He was actually hurting himself. Here Jesus says, it is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Isn't it hard that you're still fighting against me? Aren't you getting hurt by this? That's what he says. Verse 6, and he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what will thou have me to do? What a great question, huh? And the Lord said unto him, arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. Jesus Christ is going to give him more information. And part of this study is to look at the information that he got. Okay? And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. And Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no man, but they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And he was three days without sight, and neither did eat nor drink. And there was a certain disciple in Damascus named Ananias. And to him, the Lord in a vision, and to him said the Lord in a vision. So the Lord is Jesus Christ. Yeah. So the Lord talks to Saul, and he's also going to talk to Ananias. Something that I wanted to point out here, it says, he saw the Lord in a vision. And we're going to see this word vision come up a few times in this study. So I just want to point that out. And he said, behold, I am here. You'd do the same, right? If God 
the Lord talked to you, you'd say, here I am, what do you want? And the Lord said unto him, arise and go into the street, which is called straight, and inquire at the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus, for behold, he prayeth. And he has seen in a vision, right? So Saul saw in a vision a man named Ananias. So Ananias cannot say, he's going to though. Ananias cannot say, well, send Dave. Because he didn't see a vision of a man named Dave come over. He saw a vision of a man named Ananias. Go. So he said, of a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hands on him that he might receive his sight. <coughs> then Ananias answered and said, send Dave. No, Ananias answered and said, Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he had done to thy saints at Jerusalem. And here he hath authority from the chief priests to bind all that call on thy name. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me, to bear my name, for I, and that I is Jesus Christ, for I will show unto him. So he's not done showing him. He will show unto him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. And Ananias went his way and entered into the house and put in his hands on him, said, Brother Saul, to do that, he knows that he must be a brother. Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest, has sent me that thou mayest receive thy sight and to be filled with the Holy Spirit, the mm. power of God. And immediately... There fell from his eyes, as it had been scales, he received sight forthwith, forthwith and arose and was baptized. And when he had received meat, he was strengthened. Then was Saul certain days with the disciples that were at Damascus. And straightway he preached Christ in the synagogue. So he starts his ministry off preaching that he is the Son of God. But all that heard him were amazed and says, Is not this he that destroyed them which call this name in Jerusalem and came hither for that intent that he might bring them bound unto the high priest? But Saul increased the more in strength and confounded the Judeans which dwelt at Damascus, proven that this is very Christ, that this was the Christ. And after many days, many days were fulfilled, the Jews took counsel to kill him. The Judeans took counsel to kill him. But their laying of weight was known unto Saul, and they watched the gate day and night to kill him. And when the disciples took him by night and led him down by the wall in a basket, and when Paul was come to Jerusalem, Paul came to Jerusalem three years later. When it says when he came, it doesn't mean immediately after, after the basket and coming down the wall, okay? It doesn't mean that. I am going to show you a little timeline of what happened here, and I'm going to do this by going to Galatians. But I want you to keep a finger or a little ribbon or something like that here and we're going to go to galatians chapter one and it's, we're going to learn a little bit more about paul and his conversion and the timeline which is very interesting and noteworthy and i'm going to start in verse 11 of chapter one and this is paul you know writing the letter to the galatians it says but i certify you brethren that the gospel which, is, which was preached of me is not after man. It wasn't by the will of man. We know that all the word of God is not by the will of man, but as holy men moved as they were moved by the Holy Spirit, right? For neither I received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. That sort of lines up with the section that says, I will tell him what he's going to have to do. Different scholars have taken that phrase, 
but by the revelation of Jesus Christ and, and, and sort of translated it two different ways. One, they would say, well, this was by revelation pertaining to Jesus Christ. They would say it that way. And other scholars would say it just the way it reads here, by revelation of Jesus Christ. In other words, from Jesus Christ. Both those ways work for me. Both those ways work because Jesus Christ always did the will of the Father. He was on the right hand of God. He was the second in command. They always did the same thing. So what's the problem? If it came from God or Jesus Christ, the same person, same idea, same entity. So I have no problem with either one of those things. But the scholars that do translate that try to point out other things. And I, don't, I just want to let the word speak for itself. Verse 13, for ye have heard of my conversation in times past in the Judean religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it. It lines up what we read in Acts, right? Yeah. And profited in the Judean religion above many my equals in my own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the tradition of my fathers. Doesn't say tradition of God. <laughs> His fathers, the fathers of the Judean religion. And when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his what? Grace. grace. Like Ken said, the grace has been throughout the word of God. And here it's very significant that Paul says, by grace, by favor. I didn't deserve this, but God gave it to me. We don't deserve what we get from God either, but by God's grace, we are who we are. That's and true. Paul says that in Corinthians. We are who we are by the grace of God. Verse 16, to reveal his son in me that I might preach him among the heathen. Immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. He didn't go to people to find out what he should do. Neither went I up in Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me, but I went to Arabia and returned again to Damascus. Then after three years, that's where I got the three years from in Acts, right? Yeah. It says, then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and I rode with him 15 days, but other of the apostles saw I none, save James, the Lord's brother. Now the things which I write unto you, behold, before God, I lie not. He's telling the truth. It's God's word. Afterwards, I came to the region of Syria and Cilia, and was unknown by face unto the churches of the Judeans. Here they write it, they translate it right, Judean. Whenever you see the word Jew, you should automatically say Judeans, because that's the right translation. Jew is a derogatory term and shouldn't be in the Bible. It's not what it's talking about. It's talking about Judean, which were in Christ. But that they heard only that he which persecuted in times past now preached the faith which once he destroyed, and they glorified God in me. He says, see, they glorified God in me. Pretty neat. We're going to come back to Galatians to keep the, uh, the timeline going, but I want to go back to Acts chapter 9, right here. And I want to start in verse 22. We've already read some of this, but this is talking about Paul increasing in verse 22, more in strength and confounded the Judeans which dwelt in Damascus, proven that this is very Christ. When was this? Well, I'm going to tell you, we don't know if it was two weeks after his conversion or sometime between three years. Mm -hmm. Right. But he did receive strength. He did receive understanding of God's word. In verse 22, and after that, many days, see as many days were involved here, were fulfilled. The Judeans took counsel to kill him. 
but they lay in await was known of Saul, and they watched the gates day and night to kill him. And when the disciples took him by night, they let him down by the wall in a basket. And when Paul was come to Jerusalem three years later, right, he essayed to join himself to the disciples, but they were all afraid of him and believed not that he was a disciple. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles and declared unto them how he had seen the Lord in the way and that he had spoken to unto him and how he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. And he was with them coming and going out at Jerusalem. And he spake boldly in the name of the Lord Jesus and disputed against the Grecians, but they went about to slay him. Mm. So when he does get to Jerusalem, their reaction to him is, we got to kill this guy. That was the, what they mm. wanted to do. Which, when the brethren knew it, they brought him down to Caesarea. And Caesarea is an interesting thing that we need to know because that's where... Philip went, and it's also where Cornelius hung out. There's no record where any of those three guys got together, but it's just noteworthy. Then sent him forth to Tarsus. And we're, we're going to stop there, and we're going to go back to Galatians chapter 2. I want to just show you the timeline here. And in verse 1, it says, Then 14 years after, I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas and took Titus with me also. This is not talking about this period. This is talking about Acts chapter 15, which we may study later in this study. But it sort of shows you 15, 14 years go by here, Okay. Dun, 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 they went by. <laughs> We're going to look at how, more about what is revealed in God's word about the conversion, okay? And the next place we're going to look at it is Acts chapter 22. So turn your Bibles to Acts chapter 22. And this is at the time of Paul's arrest. When Paul goes to Jerusalem after God says, don't go, and he gets arrested there, this is what this record is. And he's on the castle stairs. We're going to start in verse uh, 4 and read this section because there's more learning here. Okay? And it says, And I persecuted this way unto death. He's recounting to the, the chief captain, right, what happened to him. He's, I persecuted the, you know, this thing this way unto death, binding and delivering unto prison both men and women, as also the high priest doth bear me witness, and all the estate of the elders, from whom also I received letters unto the brethren, and went to Damascus to, to bring them which were bound unto Jerusalem for to be punished. He's saying, these guys right here, they want, you know, want to do me harm. They know this is true. That's what he's saying. You, they know this is true. And it came to pass that I, as I made my journey and was come nigh to Damascus about noon, suddenly there shone a light from heaven, a, heaven, a great light round about me, and I fell to the ground, and I heard a voice saying unto me, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? He, he's, it's almost the exact same wording is used in chapter 9. Yeah. And I answered, and who art thou, Lord? And he said unto me, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom thou persecutest. And when they that were with me saw indeed the light and were afraid, but they heard not the voice of him that spake unto me. And I said, what shall I do, Lord? I mean, that's such a great question. What shall I do? Have any of you ever asked that of the Lord? I have. 
what shall I do? And the Lord said unto me, Arise and go into Damascus, and there it shall be told thee of all things which I which are appointed for thee to do. He says, you go there and you're going to learn more of what you're supposed to do. And when I could not see for the glory of the light, being led by the hand of them which were with me, came to Damascus and one Ananias, a devout man, according to the law, having a good report of, of all the Judeans which dwelt there, came unto me and stood and said unto me, Brother Saul, receive thy sight. And the same hour I looked up upon him. You know, in the, in the time reckoning, in the times of the gospel, the hour was the shortest period of time. They had a sundial, you know, they didn't have minutes and seconds. So when the, when, whenever you see in the Bible that same hour, it really means, you know, right away, right away. Verse 14, and he said, The God of our fathers has chosen thee that thou shouldest know his will. Hmm. Well, how do you know the will of God? Well, the word of God is the will of God. That's how you know. He was going to get the words of God, the will of God, and see that holy one and shouldest hear the voice of his mouth. For that thou shalt be his witnesses unto all men of what thou hast seen and heard. You're supposed to tell Paul all that you've seen and heard. And now why tarriest thou? Arise and be baptized, and wash away thy sins according to the name of the Lord. And it came to pass that when... I was come again to Jerusalem, even while I prayed in the temple. So when is he in uh, Jerusalem? Three years. Three years later. He's in the temple. Might as well pray while you're there. <laughs> and I was, in a, I was in a trance. Interesting word, trance. A lot of times that same word is translated vision. And I saw him... And I saw him saying unto me, Make haste and get thee quickly out of Jerusalem, for they will not receive thy testimony concerning me. He got revelation from Jesus Christ to get out of Jerusalem. And he got out of there. Hmm. And he got out of there. And I said, Lord, they know that I have been imprisoned and have beaten in every synagogue them that believe on thee. This is Paul saying, they got to know that I'm the guy that did this. Mm. And when the blood of thy martyr Stephen was shed, I also was standing by and consenting unto his death and kept the raiment of them that slew him. And he said unto me, depart, here's revelation, depart, for I will send thee far hence unto the Gentiles. Paul was sent to the Gentiles. It says so right here. And they gave him audience unto his word. And they lifted up their voice and they said, Away with this such a fellow from the earth, for it is not fit that he should live. That's what the people that were there said. And as they cried out, they cast off their clothes and threw dust into the air. That must have been one way to really show you were mad. Verse 24, And the chief captain commanded him to be brought into the castle and bade that he should be examined by surging. That What that means is, what did, what tell us the truth, and then they smack you. Is that really the truth? And they keep smacking you until they think they got the truth. That's what it's talking about. And that he might know whereof they cried against him. He wanted, the captain wanted to know why they were all wanted to kill him. And as they bound him with thongs, Paul said unto the centurion that stood by, is it lawful for you to scourge a man that is a Roman? Is it lawful for you to beat me and uncondemned? And when the centurion heard that, he went and he told the chief captain saying, Take heed what thou doest, for this man is a Roman. He's a Roman citizen. 
So you can't do that. Then the chief captain came and said to him, tell me, art thou a Roman? And he said, yep, that's what I am. And as the chief captain answered, with a great sum uh, obtained, I this freedom, and Paul said, nope, I was born that way. I was free born. And straightway they departed went from him. They examined him and the, cap, the chief captain also was afraid after he knew that he was a Roman and because he had bound him. Mm -hmm. And that's how Paul's life got saved at that moment. But there's more information in God's word about his conversion. Go to chapter 26 in verse 1. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Thou art permitted to speak for thyself. So he's finally in uh, Rome. He's in front of King Agrippa, and Agrippa says, hey, you can speak for yourself. And look what Paul says here. Then Paul, stretching forth his hand and answering for, answered for himself, I think myself happy, King Agrippa, because I shall answer for myself this day before thee touching all things whereof I am accused of the Judeans. He says, I'm blessed to be able to talk to you, especially because I know thee to be an expert in all customs and questions which are among the Judeans. Therefore, I beseech ye to hear me patiently. Paul wants to give his whole story, and he starts. My manner of life from my youth, which was at first among my own nation at Jerusalem, know all the Judeans. He's saying everyone knows my upbringing, all these people do, which knew me from the beginning. If they would testify that after the most strictest sect of our religion, I lived a Pharisee, and now I stand and am judged for the hope of the promise made of God unto our fathers. That hope was the hope of Jesus Christ's first appearance. That was the hope they were looking for. We're looking for the hope of his second appearance. But Paul is saying, this is the hope that Moses and all the prophets were talking about. Verse 7, unto which promise are our 12 tribes instantly serving God day and night, hope to come. They were hoping for this Jesus Christ to come. For which hope's sake, King Agrippa, I am accused of the Judeans. Why should it be thought a thing incredible with you that God should raise the dead. Why should that be such a hard thing to believe? Mm. I verily thought with myself that I ought to do many things contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth because he didn't want to believe the hope at first himself. Which things I also did in Jerusalem, and many of the saints did I shut up in prison having received authority from the chief priest. And when they were put to death, I gave my voice against them. He, in a judgmental seat, said, yes, these guys are preaching Jesus Christ. Have them killed. Paul was very instrumental in seeing people die. And I punished them off in every synagogue compelling them to blasphemy and being exceedingly mad against them, I persecuted them even to, unto strange cities, whereupon as I went to Damascus with authority and commission from the high priest, at midday, O king, I saw in the, the way a light from heaven above the shining of the sun, shining round about me and with them which journeyed with me. And when we 
were all fallen to the ground, I heard a voice speaking unto me and saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Mm -hmm. And I said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said unto me, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. But rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose. Ready? We're going to learn the purpose right here. To make thee a minister and a witness, both of these things which thou hast seen, which was that conversion on the road to Damascus, mm -hmm. which he did in Jerusalem and other places. Then it goes, and of those things which in which I will appear unto thee, delivering thee from the people and the Gentiles unto whom now I send thee. Mm. What was his mission? Well, here it is, to open the eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God. That was his mission. His mission was to open their eyes and turn them from darkness, which means no understanding, to light, which means understanding. From Satan, which means devil spirit in his kingdom, unto God, which means God's kingdom, the kingdom of God, and his people, his angels, his believers, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and the inheritance among them which are sanctified by, by believing, which is me, in me. He was to let them know about forgiveness of sins, which is available then and today. All our sins are forgiven. And an inheritance hmm. among them which are sanctified. Paul was to share in the inheritance. We are to share in the inheritance. That's grace. That's grace which are sanctified by faith or believe in that is in me. Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision, but showed first at, unto them at Damascus and at Jerusalem and throughout all the coasts of Judea, and then to the Gentiles that they should repent Repent means to change your mind for a more worthy endeavor and in God's word to a closer walk with God. You do that by learning God's word and walking closer with God. To turn, and he did that, that the Gentiles should repent, have a closer walk with God, and turn to God and to work meet for repentance. That repentance means the renewed mind. That means the doing of the things. The things that God wants you to do by the freedom of your will. Everything's done by freedom of will. Paul was a chosen vessel of God and Jesus Christ, right? But Paul had to, by the freedom of his will, change his mind and do it. And he did for the most part, except when God says not to go. He says, well... I just got to get to Jerusalem. Just like every one of us. Hmm. Have every one of us always did what God hmm. asked us to do? I would say no, because <laughs> all the sin and come short of the glory of God. We're no different than Paul. But by the grace of God, we can always go, God, hmm. I'm ready now, God. I'm ready now. That's what it's talking about. We have the ability to change our mind, to line up with, the, with what God says and have a closer walk with God, we do that by the freedom of our will. We go as fast and as far as we want with God. Mm -hmm. If you want to go fast and hard for God, go ahead and fast for God. You won't be disappointed. Well, dear God, I thank you that there are lessons here in the conversion of Saul and the great apostle Paul, and we can learn things here that we can utilize in our life. And what I'm really looking for here is that we can tap into the grace, the favor of God upon our lives, not because of how good we are, but because of how good he is. And we can always tap into those resources.
and we can do as much as we want or as little as we want, God, but thank you that we can rise to the place that God would really like us because that's where we could live the best. And I thank you for these things in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen.